Discoveries in technology, medicine and nutrition are emerging with accelerating speed and improving our health and quality of life. Join us in a series of conversations about exploring the new pharma and biotechnology trends. This is a view on gene editing brought to you by Lonza. Today, we are talking with Andre Schulika, the chairman and CEO of Selectis. Gene editing has many potential therapeutic applications. For example, it can be used to correct diseases and disorders that have a genetic basis. It is the next transformative step in medicine. Selectis is a pioneering clinical stage biopharma company that focuses on developing cancer immunotherapies based on allogeneic gene-edited CAR T cells. I know it's a mouthful, but we will explain everything in this exciting podcast episode. Hi, Andre. Thank you for coming to our podcast. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. Selectis has over 20 years of experience, and it's undoubtedly challenging to squeeze all of your expertise and experience into one podcast episode. But let's try and do our best. The principle of gene editing is very simple. In the same way that spellcheck identifies and corrects errors in a word or grammar errors in a sentence, gene editing can be used to precisely edit or change the genetic code within DNA. But how exactly does spellcheck compare to gene editing, Andre? Gene editing works exactly the same way as you would edit a text. It's very similar. The big difference is that it's a physical molecule, the DNA, where you will go in there and remove parts of the DNA text, so like the basis, or you can introduce some parts as you introduce a word. A word would be a gene or, for example, correcting a mistake, such as a mutation in a gene. It could be, for example, a spelling mistake in a word text or replacing sequence by another, so like a gene by another. It's exactly the same way you would do it. And the principle is introducing something inside the living cell that would go inside the nucleus, would find a unique specific DNA sequence, cut the sequence, and at the place of the cut, then you could do the editing that you would like. For example, inserting, replacing, correcting, or deleting. Is there any limitation on how much information you can insert at once? It's difficult to answer this type of question because the system has not been pushed to the maximum. One thing that we know is the shorter the sequence to be introduced is, the easier and the higher the efficiency will be. The other limitation is the ability to bring very large fragments inside the cell. How safe is this process? Can you target only a specific sequence within the DNA? Or is there a danger of targeting another sequence similar to the intended one? Well, the safety part is the most important part for us as a gene editing company. Normally, the principle of these DNA cutters, Halen, for example, not to go and cut somewhere else is a cryptology system. The cryptology system is the size of the DNA target that you will cleave. However, there is always a necessity to try to check for what's called off-target sites that could be cleaved or could be recombined in a certain way in the cell. And it's easy to re-engineer a tail-in in order to suppress all the potential off-target cleavage that the tail-in could have in order only to focus on the cleavage side where you want to do this. So safety as the utmost importance and quality of the product would come from this. Designer nucleases can be imagined as molecular scissors that can cut a specific bond within the DNA structure. In general, there are four types of nucleases, including zinc finger nucleases, mega nucleases, TALEN or CRISPR RNA guided nucleases. They all work by a similar principle, by cutting the DNA strand at various positions, which can lead to gene insertion gene repair, or gene inactivation. Selectus is totally technology agnostic. We've tested them all, and we've been developing them all. However, Selectus, over 20 years of investment in the field of gene editing, had come to the conclusion that the most flexible 
and the most versatile technology in the space and also the more efficient and the safest is the tailing. What exactly is tailing? Is this a nuclease based on the structure of an existing enzyme, a de novo protein or a fusion protein? It's an excellent question. The tailing is a hybrid protein. It comes from, on one side, a transcription-like factor that comes from infectious product in plants. And the other side, it comes from an enzyme, a type 2 restriction enzyme called FOK1. And so we take the head of FOK1 and fuse it to binding domain of the tau effector protein, and it makes a tailin, which is a tau effector nucleases. One of the four nuclease types, uh, the CRISPR-Cas9, is presumably the most known. Is CRISPR as effective in gene repair and insertion as Talon, for example? The Talon gave results that were way more specific and way more performance. So we continue using CRISPR as a research tool, but so far we haven't pushed it as a therapeutic product. And we think that the therapeutic grade of a CRISPR is underperforming the therapeutic grade of a Talon. At the moment, Selectus is addressing cancer patients. Could you explain how exactly do you use the Talon technology to produce the CAR T-cells and what are they actually useful for? So CAR T-cell is at the base of a T-cell. A T-cell is a cell that circulates in the body and that would recognize any foreign uh, body in there. For example, a foreign tissue, a cell that has been infected by flu, or coronavirus. And normally, if the person have a very good immune system and great T cells, whenever these T cells recognize a cell that has been infected by flu, this T cell will immediately sniff that there is something that is not owned by the body and will destroy it. Now, what people have started thinking is that we can use this propensity of the T cell to kill other cells trying to target the T-cell to kill cancer cells. That's why a CAR has been introduced there. A CAR is a protein that is a surface protein on the T-cell that would have a head of an antibody that would recognize a tumor-associated antigen, an antigen present in the cancer cells, and send a signal inside the T-cell to fire at the cancer cell. Now, does each cancer type present the same type of antigen on the surface, or do you have to engineer CAR T-cells specific for each cancer type? Certain type of cancers could be recognized by the same CAR. For example, not Hodgkin lymphoma. So every cancer has multiple potential targets, but every target is present on a lot of different types of cells, of cancers. Do you need T-cells from the patient, or could you get them from a donor? The problem is that the T-cell, if you take a T-cell from a healthy person and like to inject this T-cell to a person that is, has a cancer, the T-cell of the donor will recognize the person that has a cancer as a foreign person and will start firing at every tissue. And instead of focusing on the cancer cell as a CAR-T, will start focusing on all the cells and start destroying everything, inducing what's called the graft versus host disease. If you do this, you would kill the patient through this graft versus host disease. That's where gene editing comes. What we have invented is this concept of allogenic T cells, where you take the T cell from a healthy donor and you introduce inside the T cell a DNA cutter that would destroy the T cell receptor and the cell will become totally blind to any foreign cells. And the only way to recognize a cell would be through the car. This certainly opens up many possibilities for off-the-shelf therapies. And indeed, Selectis already has a rich pipeline addressing a series of different types of indications, such as leukemia, multiple myeloma, or non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Are any of your candidates already in clinical trials? We have three products currently in the clinic, which is UCAR-T22 in acute lymphoblastic leukemia, UCAR-T 1 to 3 in acute myelid leukemia, and UCART CS1 in multiple myeloma. These are the products that we have. So this is six trials altogether that are conducted. Wonderful. Thank you for this deep dive into the world of gene editing, Andre. 
Join us next time as we explore the wonders of human microbiome and its effect on our physical and mental health.